Mohammad Yunus, the chief advisor of Bangladesh's interim government, has sought Pakistan's help to revive SARC as a primary platform for regional cooperation in South Asia. Yunus met Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly in New York. Both leaders underscored the need to revitalize the bilateral cooperation between the two countries. According to reports, the chief advisor of Bangladesh, Mohammad Yunus, said that reviving SARC could be a good way to improve ties. Promising his support, Sharif reportedly suggested Bangladesh and Pakistan revive the regional platform and open a new page in their relations to enhance cooperation. Sharif also expressed his government's interest in investing in Bangladesh's textile and leather sectors. Now, Mohammed Yunus also proposed an exchange of youth programs, renewal of foreign secretary level talks, and reactivating the joint commission between the two countries. Established in 1985, the South Asian bloc comprises eight member nations, which included India, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, the Maldives, and Nepal. Since its inception, it has held 18 summits so with an aim to promote economic development and regional integration. This November will mark a decade since the last SARC summit was held in November of 2014 in Kathmandu. In 2016, the 19th summit hosted by Pakistan was cancelled following the Uri attacks in India. India announced boycott of the summit, alleging Pakistan's hand in the attacks. This has prompted other nations, including Bangladesh, to also pull out of the summit. Joining us now on the show is Ambassador Sheel Kant Sharma, who is the former Secretary General of SARC. Well, welcome uh, to the broadcast, Ambassador Sharma. It's great to actually have you on the show since you have been at the helm of things as concerns SARC. So, Bangladesh's chief advisor meets the Pakistan Prime Minister, seeking Pakistan's help to revive SARC. Now, Sharif expressed Pakistan's interest in investing in Bangladesh's textile and leather sector. Since you've been the former Secretary General of SARC, your initial reaction to this development? Well, you know, <clears throat> Bangladesh is the one uh, which was uh, a country uh, uh, at the origin of SARC. You know, SARC was created at behest of the Bangladesh president then in the 1980s. So, and then Bangladesh has been very supportive of SARC. So whatever they say, uh, I think one should respect. Second, Mohammed Yunus himself is a great economist. And I remember meeting him in 2009. And at that time, we were talking of SARC Development Fund, which was created. Uh, and he was supportive of that idea. And he said, but it should increase the uh, the capital from 300 million to 3 billion. He said, there's a lot of money required to really spur development and social economic progress in South region. So he was uh, a visionary at that time, uh, you know, and he talked about uh, the positive direction which SARC could take. So in that context, when you hear him talk about SARC, uh, it, it was heartening. However, however, the situation today in South, South Asia is very different. Uh, in 2014, when the last summit was held, even then there was already a cooked uh, motor vehicles agreement, uh, but the country which was holding it was Pakistan. And then they decided to uh, give a further three months or six months uh, time to Pakistan to come back, and the summit uh, ended with a good statement. But they never came back. And uh, then, so we were compelled to look for, and then the world was moving forward. The the window of opportunities were closing. So regionalism in this, re uh, in this region was uh, waiting for, for a spurt. So then BIMSTEC was chosen as, as an option. And BIMSTEC is headquartered in Dhaka. So now when Bangladesh's chief economic advi chief advisor, uh, you know, as president uh, like uh, in Bangladesh, when he speaks about SARC, then naturally question arises about what will happen to BIMSTEC. Because BIMSTEC doesn't have Pakistan as a member. Whereas he meets Pakistani Prime Minister in New York and then talks about SARC. So what is the implied uh, you know, meaning? Now, these are the questions which come to fore. Then, you see, the whole problem of SARC has been that 
political issues which were kept out by the very thoughtful uh, you know, drafters of the Sark Charter in 1985 have been coming back like a ghost, you know. Every time something happens, the, the political problems bedevil it. And Sark is a very modest, very, very micro organization. Its total budget is minimal, you know. It has just uh, eight directors and one secretary general, which has very limited uh, uh, mandate. So with this kind of a very small organization, you should not burden it with political problems. Mm. However, every time uh, Sark is taken up, they demand political solutions. It cannot give you a solution when it is not created to give you solutions like that. It is created to give you socio-economic progress, which is a very good vision and that should continue. The whole purpose is that once socio-economic progress takes place, it will automatically create a certain climate for further cohesion. So this cohesion and mutual interdependence and uh, and aiming for the uh, well-being uh, and development of the people, this entire people of uh, South Asia is a very worthy goal. And I am strongly for it. So anyone who speaks for it, I have to support it. However, in, a set nine years, in the ninth summit, they created an eminent persons group. That was 1998-99. The, at that time, the total population of South Asia was 1.3 billion. Today, India alone is more than 1.4 billion. Mm. So, demographic uh, explosion has taken place. And how are they coping with this demography in, in South Asia? Right. In one country, they are coping it with uh, espousing terrorism and becoming an epicenter of terrorism and giving us uh, all kinds of uh, you know whitewashed uh, lives. Another country where minorities are now being, uh, uh, you know, frightened and uh, we have uh, voiced legitimate concern about it. Mm. Then you have a big dragon breathing down the neck in, in 24, 24 uh, who has very different ambitions. So uh, the dragon wants to take over South Asia under its wings. Right. And uh, so, you know, this is the kind of a present political climate in which when you talk about South Asia, right. first talk about BIMSTEC, which is already created, which has already made progress and which is housed in Dhaka. Right. So we must know first, how do you think, what do you think about BIMSTEC? Then we'll see. Otherwise, you know, this is like uh, there's a saying that you, uh, you know, you leave with the bird in the hand and go for the bird, uh, bird in the bush. Sure. This is not the way. Ambassador Sharma, I could also uh, ask you about the Nobel Laureate comparing it uh, to the European Union. But let me first ask you about the Indian contest. Now, in March of 2024, India's external affairs minister highlighted that Sark's survival was at risk due to Islamabad's ongoing support for cross-border terrorism. Of course, to reiterate that India had boycotted Sark following Uri attacks. And Bangladesh, in fact, was one of the countries to boycott it too. So how do you view uh, Mohammed Yunus approaching Pakistan in the Indian context here? How does it bold, uh, bode for the India-Bangladesh relations here? Well, relationship between India and Bangladesh is, uh, you know, it is anchored on very substantial socio-economic uh, factors. And the progress which has been made over the last two decades has been very substantial. So these relationships have certain objective basis and that they would continue. These objective uh, realities uh, cannot be, uh, you know, changed. But uh, as democracies, you know, we have uh, countries in South Asia which have a uh, different way of governing. So they are now passing through a phase in which they might have uh, different uh, dispensation which will, which will be in the governance in Dhaka. Now that dispensation at the moment going by the news reports and otherwise seems to have a different view of Pakistan uh, from what uh, it, it was, uh, say, uh, a year ago, or at the time when the, uh, when the 60, 2016 summit was being held and uh, Bangladesh agreed not to join that summit. So if there's a change in the dispensation and, and the attitude, then what is it that, cause it that is causing that change? Has Pakistan modified its approach? Has Pakistan given up on terrorism? The infiltration in Kashmir continues. And, the and uh, you know, we have to constantly be on our watch because they have not given up on anything. Right. So, to and then the thing is that in Sark in the past also, 1999, 2000, also there was a problem, 2001, 2002. That was a phase in which 
after the Indian nu nuclear test, Pakistanis copycat test, there was this whole thing that uh, uh, Pakistan would not have a summit. Hmm. So then they agreed that, okay, if Pakistan cannot hold it, then let's, let's hold it in Sri Lanka, let's hold it in Nepal. If you wanted to put forward SAR, then give solutions that, and the country which has a problem can they can hold on for a while when it's till its bilateral relations improve so pakistan in 2016 should have stepped back and said okay let's uh, let uh, another country continue with SAR. we will come back mm -hmm. and when india and pakistan's relations would have improved the summit could have taken place as it was done in 20, 2004 when uh, india agreed to uh, to let pakistan hold the summit in uh, you know and uh, pakistan gave a commitment that it did not uh, allow terrorism from its right. soil so that was a deal in 2004 under which the summit was agreed in pakistan right. that deal was helping it was belied by the 26 11 by the parliamentary attack you know all, all these things and, and then uh, yuri attack so in 2016 naturally we, we didn't agree to have a summit in pakistan because you cannot have uh, you know epicenter of terrorism flourishing there and then you have this event of sark summit where you you know, you try and uh, uh, talk big, mm. you know, so that is, uh, that was, uh, no, no. Today has situation changed. This is a problem. It's a pity that someone whom we respect a lot, Mohammed Yunus, in yeah. his personal capacity, as well as a country whom we attach a lot of importance, Bangladesh, and particularly for SAR. Uh, so it is coming from them. So we have to say, take it uh, with, uh, you know, uh, with some uh, degree of, uh, satisfaction and also we can think about it what to do i am an old sarkist i would i still feel that these problems will continue to bedevil us but we should have a long-term vision where this entire population of this region which has suffered you know unnecessarily and which is bound together by geography uh, and geographical contiguity mm -hmm. and today's challenges like climate change when uh, extreme events take place in climate because of climate change it doesn't respect they don't respect boundaries so bangladesh and india and pakistan and uh, nepal they are all affected so they are, this is this is incumbent on them to think about cooperation to deal with the challenges mm. the economic crisis which is uh, which is there in the world the food crisis for all of them right. if they work together it is good right. but pakistan in that has its own uh, attitude, you know, its, its own lonely furrow. Hmm. And then it wants to join SARC. So what's the purpose? It wants to hold the summit and uh, increase its uh, profile and then continue with the uh, you know, epicenter of terrorism. Uh, Ambassador, and so, yeah. Yeah. Right. Ambassador Sharma, it was uh, truly a pleasure talking to you and getting your valuable insights on this. Uh, however, for the paucity of time, we will have to pick this discussion on another time. Thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. For all the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.